Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. Jabba Chamberlain, Philip Hughes, Chago Dan, Alfredo Aceves, who's going to hold the fifth spot in the rotation for the Yankees? One of the biggest questions in camp at this point. I would personally like to see Chamberlain get a second chance. I think that all those Jabba rules, pulling him in and out of the lineup last year, limiting his innings and innings pitch, really did the youngster a disservice. But there's a movement to move him back to the pen because he was so successful there and to take the man who took his spot last year, Philip Hughes, and insert him into the starting rotation. Hughes, who threw his changeup last year 1% of the time, obviously he didn't need that pitch to dominate hitters out of the bullpen, has been working on his changeup and will throw it a lot in spring, signaling that he's at least trying to add to his repertoire of pitches to give the Yankees every opportunity to analyze what he brings to the table and to really vie for that fifth spot. Again, it's a wide open race at this point. We'll have to wait and see how it develops. I would like to see Chamberlain start, see Hughes remain in that eighth inning setup role, but we'll have to wait and see what the Yankees decide to do. Tim Hudson, a pitcher coming back off injury. Uh, he had Tommy John surgery, looked good at the end of last season. He threw two shutout innings today. Very good news. All systems are go with Hudson. Again, he looked good at the end of the 2010 season. He's going undervalued, in my opinion, in fantasy leagues this year. This is a pitcher that every year he's healthy, has that area in the mid threes, wins it to 14, 15 ball games. Look for Hudson to have another one of those seasons as a depth play in the Braves rotation and for him to be a very valuable force in fantasy rotations in 2010. Another pitcher coming back from injuries is Jeremy Bonderman. Now, Bonderman's got a litany of injuries throughout his career. He's been really ineffective the past couple of seasons. In fact, he hasn't been a valuable member of the Tigers rotation since 2006. He's looked good as well. Uh, he threw two shot innings of his own today. Uh, the Tigers are very excited about his progress. They're really hopeful that he might get a chance to open the season as their fourth or fifth starter. Tough to count on him because of all the troubles he had, but because of his good showing today and his continued improvement in health, they're very, very encouraged. They don't want 220 innings from Bonnerman. They'd be very happy probably with 170, 180 innings for him. If they get that, that will go a long ways to helping the Tigers in their attempts to make the playoffs this season. Brad Lidge, an injured pitcher as well. He's had knee and elbow issues. I've talked about him before here on Around the Horn at BaseballGuys.com. Good reports continue to come out for the Phillies' closer. Uh, he's throwing pitches off the hill, uh, not having any problems. He's uh, progressed to throwing sliders. He still is behind the other pitchers and is still not certain when he'll get into game action. But there's a growing belief in the Phillies camp that Lidge may not have to start the year on the disabled list. He might actually open the year with the Big League Cup. We'll have to wait and see. There's still a month to go before that happens. But all thumbs up for Brad Lidge at the moment as the Phillies head on to the schedule in spring training. Jared Jurgens is the last pitcher I'm going to talk about with injury concerns. He had an MRI on his shoulder. A lot of concerns there when the issue first came up. The report showed nothing structurally wrong. Since then, he's had a little bit of soreness, but nothing major. He continues to throw on the side without any incident. He anticipates being in a game next week. Uh, if he does that and continues to progress without any setbacks, look for Jurgens to, to have plenty of time to get ready for the start of the regular season and to make his first turn in the Braves rotation in 2010. Great news for a club that really worried about him just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Jason Hayward, you heard of him maybe? Greatest player in the history of the world? <laughs> According to early reports and some people's hyperbole, that's kind of what we're at right now. Uh, he's looked great in games, he's been getting hits, been stealing bases. All the, the hoopla over his batting practice work, all of this is positive news. No one thinks Hayward isn't anything but an all-star caliber potential player for the next decade. Plus, he's viewed roundly as the number one prospect in baseball on the offensive side of the game. However, he's just 20 years old. He has very little minor league experience. He's got no major league experience. Now, I know players and people around the Braves are very excited and think he'll open the year with the team. In fact, Chipper Jones came out today and said he'd be shocked if he didn't open the season with the club. But at the same time, I, you know, I tell you to exercise caution with Hayward. Lots of concern because of the age and the inexperience. Not because of the skills, those are legit. But guys his age just don't very frequently have a lot of success at the major league level. Still the chance he opens the year as a starter in the outfield. And if he does, he's one to watch because he is uber talented. Uh, Lance Berkman, an infielder, first baseman. Uh, he's had a knee issue the last couple days. Uh, MRI showed there was nothing serious there. Look for him just to, to kind of work through that as well. He often has these little bumps and bruises, most of the time plays through them, does a very good job. He's a bounce back candidate in my mind. I still think he's right on the fringe of the top 10 at first base. May not be valued as such in your fantasy league. So you know, keep the name of Lance Berkman in your head on draft day. His numbers last year were down a bit, but it was really more of the result of him missing those extra 80 at bats because of the injuries than it was a dip in his performance. And finally, the last guy on my list, Aaron Harang, named the starter for the Reds. Some people are probably, I mean the opening day starter, excuse me, for the Reds. Some people might question that move. They look at his record the last two seasons and wonder what the hell Dusty Baker's doing. The truth is there isn't a lot of difference between 
harangue last year and harangue from a couple of seasons ago when he was dominating National League pitchers. I mean hitters, excuse me. Strikeout ratio of almost eight per, per nine innings is strong. He doesn't walk many batters. His 3.30 uh, strikeout to walk ratio last year is a very strong total, and it's indicative of a pitcher that can still dominate hitters when he's on. Uh, he continues to be plagued a bit by the long ball. He'll need to see a little bit of a regression there. But at the same time, last year he had the worst line drive rate and the worst batting average balls and play mark of his entire career. If those two numbers regress to his career average and he gets just a bit of luck from the offensive side of the ball there with the Reds, look for him to turn around his season and be a really good target late in drafts because he's extremely undervalued because of that losing record that he's posted the last two seasons. Again, I'm Ray Flowers with BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me on Around the Horn, and I'll talk to you all again soon.